There has been an explosion in debt, and this now poses a very real risk to a certain sector in our economy. We're now looking at levels we haven't seen in several decades, even surpassing the financial crisis of 2008. What we're referring to is a delinquency rate. Very simply, the percentage of loans that are 60 days past due. Now, this is measured throughout several sectors within our economy. What you'll find surprising is that real estate actually looks pretty good. Loans secured by real estate only has a 1.4% delinquency rate. Commercial real estate, 1.2%. Single family residential, 1.7%. And we can see going back to 2008, single family residential, that delinquency rate, that was on all the headlines. That was followed also by commercial real estate, as well as loans secured by real estate. But that's not the case now. The delinquency rates on real estate are actually relatively low. And you probably won't find this too much of a surprise. There's a very strong inverse or opposite correlation to the housing markets, specifically in purple, S&P Case-Shiller National Home Price Index trending to the upside, the delinquency rate for single family residential trending lower. And again, the housing market is strong right now. No reason to believe why the delinquency rate uh, is this low. It's a good sign. However, it's not all good news. We consider credit cards. We have a 3% delinquency rate for credit cards on the first 100 top financial institutions. We have a 7.8% delinquency rate for the smaller financial institutions, those not found on the top 100 list. So we can see, for example, delinquency rate for credit cards derived from the top 100 banks that has uh, a relatively low delinquency rate, uh, still close to the other real estate sectors. However, when we take a look at the credit cards held by the smaller financial institutions, that's where we see the really big risk. So what we're talking about is exactly this, the delinquency rate on credit card loans. For the large banks that are ranked first to 100th in terms of size by assets, those are the largest banks that we know, Citibank, JP Morgan, etc. Those have international customer bases and very good risk practices. They're able to spread the risk along all different types of assets. However, when we talk about those banks not found on the top 100 list in size by assets, we're talking about the smaller banks, the regional banks. They have very local customer bases with very concentrated risk. And we can see really the stark difference of what we're looking at in green, the smaller banks, in purple, the larger banks, the small bank delinquency rate, those credit card loans to consumers, that has a 7.8% delinquency rate versus a larger bank's 3%. Why is this important? Well, CNBC reports why hundreds of U.S. banks may be at risk of failure. Hundreds of small and regional banks across the U.S. are feeling stressed. You could see some banks either fail or at least, they say, you know, dip below their minimum capital requirements. They surveyed 4,000 banks and found among those 282 that faced the dual threat of commercial real estate loans and the potential losses tied to higher interest rates. The majority of these banks are smaller lenders with less than $10 billion in assets. Now, again, why is this so important? Small banks are at a greater risk of defaults. They have very concentrated customer bases. And when one sector goes bad, maybe in a certain part of the country, that can have a negative impact, a severe negative impact to those banks. Uh, Especially with high interest rates, a particular amount of risk. These smaller banks, they just can't withstand the higher interest rate environments. And these smaller banks, these are small stocks, and they're commonly found in many different investment funds and retirement funds. So when these banks go bad, this can have a ripple effect to the rest of the sector. And we should also keep in mind, those shares of the smaller banks, they're concentrated in the Russell 2000. That's a small cap index. So... We've seen in the past when these smaller banks default, even one or two of them, there tends to be a contagion that spreads throughout the small banks and there's a lot of fear. So we should be aware of that. And the credit card 
uh, delinquency rate for the small banks really has skyrocketed. But we also have other peril to face. We recently took a deep dive into the situation in the jobs market. Now, of course, we know last Friday the non-farm payroll was reported. 175,000 jobs were recorded. Uh, but that was not the only news that was reported last week in terms of the jobs market. We also saw striking evidence of a real failing jobs market within the JOLTS report and ADP numbers as well. We took a deep dive into this uh into the sector. And uh, we've had just a tremendous response in this particular recording. So I think you'll find uh, what we've discovered to be quite interesting.